Some 250 million years ago, the building blocks of what we now know as New Zealand drifted away from the supercontinent of Gondwana land. Over millions of years, mountain ranges rose up, only to be eroded and sink below the ocean. On what is now the Coromandel Peninsula, fingers of molten rock pushed their way to the surface. As the rock cooled and cracked, new streams of lava were forced upwards. The active volcanic rock below created geothermal activity as water came into contact with the tremendous heat. This produced upwellings of boiling fluids that carried gold and silver up through the cracks in the rock. As the region cooled, these precious metals were deposited in association with quartz veins, locked into the surrounding rock structure. These epithermal deposits often form during the late stage of hydrothermal activity. Modern day examples of these systems can be seen at Whakarewarewa and Waiotapu. Today, geologists exploring for gold in the North Island look for the telltale signs of historic volcanic activity. The Coromandel Peninsula and the Hauraki region are such areas. Exploration is conducted to locate and then define mineral deposits as part of Newmont's strategy to extend the company's mining operations. However, exploration in an area does not always mean that mining will follow. Exploration may involve geological mapping, rock and soil geochemical surveys and geophysical surveys. These surveys provide information on the characteristics of the rocks, their history, strength, magnetic susceptibility, electrical resistivity, changeability and mineral content. These are all parameters which help identify areas of greater prospectivity, where more detailed work including exploration drilling, may be conducted. Exploration drilling provides a wide range of information on subsurface geology. Wide space drilling can often show geologic trends which point to areas of greater prospectivity. Most of the rigs in this area are diamond drilling rigs. They use a diamond impregnated drill bit capable of boring through hardened rock. The drill bit cuts a circular hole about 96 mm diameter to produce 60 mm diameter drill core for analysis. The drill bit is attached to the end of a string of hollow steel rods. The rig's engine spins the drill string as it is pushed into the ground. Every three meters a new rod is added. As the drill string is spinning and penetrating the rock, the core is left inside the drill rod. Every metre or so, this core is pulled out through the inside of the rods and placed in boxes ready for analysis by geologists. In the Waihe region, most holes are drilled to a depth of between 200 and 500 metres. And due to the near vertical orientation of the quartz veins, the holes must be inclined at oblique angles to intersect the veins and maximise the information from the drill core. A drill core provides only a very small sample of the rock below surface. To gain enough knowledge and with it confidence to identify an ore body, many holes may need to be drilled. This matrix of drill holes helps build a much clearer picture of any potential ore body. The drill core is taken back to a core shed and laid out, so geologists can record the rock type from surface to the bottom of the hole. Although expensive, diamond drilling provides a continuous core of rock that yields more geological information than other types of samples. Newmont's commitments to safety and health, environment and effective community relations underpin all exploration activity. Controls are in place to ensure that drilling rigs do not damage the environment. All drilling rigs must comply with District Council, Regional Council and Resource Management Act conditions. 
These may specify hours of work, noise levels, areas of restricted operation, and more. Newmont's exploration procedures are written to ensure compliance with the consents and the various district plans, council regulations, and government acts. Contractors must undertake an induction process that details Newmont's environmental, community relations and safety procedures and expectations, the various legislative requirements and site environmental controls. Rigs are regularly inspected and monitored. All incidents are reported and recorded. Any affected owners or occupiers of land are consulted. When the rig leaves, the drill hole is filled and the site is rehabilitated. Paddocks are returned to pasture by recontouring and reseeding. In bush areas, the ground is layered with plant materials such as manuka slash and native seedlings are planted. Newmont recognises that the Waihi area has a long history of mining and remains a very prospective area for further gold discovery. The company intends to continue operating in the Waihi area and the key to this is the discovery of new gold resources. If you would like more information on exploration drilling or other aspects of exploration, please contact us.